Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to our next webinar in the Admiral Markets Trading Spotlight series. My name's your, uh, uh, Paul Wallace. I'm your host for today's session. Today, we're here to talk about how to intraday trade Asian indices. Uh, I appreciate that uh, we are uh, uh, having some uh, interesting times in financial markets at the moment, so this would be quite uh, prescient, quite useful to you in the, the way you look to engage. If you uh, already have some experience of intraday trading Asian indices, then please, I'd, I'd love to hear it. Please uh, drop us a, uh, some uh, idea of what, if any, experience you've had of uh, trading Asian indices that uh, uh, helps me as well be able to just, you know, make sure that we're uh, talking about uh, uh, the right indexes at the right level but i also realized that we have a, a new traders here okay and we also have a global audience which is what will become apparent as we go on so you're all very very welcome and uh, you know it's really great to have you here and if you have any thoughts please put them in your chat box or if you're watching this later on demand on the uh, admiral markets youtube channel then there uh, please you know if you're uh, enjoying the content please feel free to give us a like please ask questions and we'll be happy to answer them or if you have thoughts or considerations for uh, future uh, sort of subjects for the uh, Admiral Markets Trading Spotlight series, then please, we'd, we'd love to hear them from you. But well, what are we going to talk about today? Well, as the name implies, we're going to give away is that I'm going to talk about introducing you to trading Asian indices primarily on an intraday uh, basis. I appreciate, as I say, some people will have experience already of trading Asian indexes. For others, it'll be completely a uh, new idea or a new concept. And so this is just a, a gentle introduction to, uh, to Asian indices. We'll talk a little bit about what you need to be aware of before you trade. There's a few things that you need to do that uh, just to ensure that uh, you're in the best place uh, possible. Uh, and also, it, that leads into you know how to position yourself for best trading success uh, and we'll talk about some of the sort of simple tactics that uh, we can utilize to help us build a, yeah, a trading plan to ensure give us the best opportunity for success in intraday trading asian indices for those who don't know me, as I said, my name's uh, Paul Wallace. I've been trading for uh, many years. Uh, primarily, I look to try and trade FX indices and commodities. For my swing trading, I'm a dominant trend trader. And for my intraday trader, I'm pr uh, primarily a mean reversion trader. And uh, Admiral Markets, as you can see there, Admiral Markets have a uh, you know a whole range of global expertise. They're licensed and regulated in many environments across the uh, the globe, providing competitive spreads and also providing access to markets through MT4 and MT5. Uh, if you have any questions, please contact your account representative, and they'll be very happy to uh, to help you. But ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about our main subject: intraday trading, Asian indices so you know as i said if you've got some uh, ideas or thoughts or if you've got some experience of it then you know we'd love to uh, we'd love to hear it i see that uh, apurva patel talks about the nikkei the asx the hsi the hang Seng. well done apurva thanks very much that's uh, good to know you've had that kind of experience and we'll sort of uh, uh, talk about that a little bit later in a few uh, few slides time but as you can see there you know we have done previous uh, sessions on how to trade us indices and how to trade european indices on an intraday uh, basis we discussed how trading indices on an intraday basis is uh, an attractive proposition to many traders due to their volatility the liquidity and the the big moves which we are seeing a lot of at this precise moment. However, uh, like we've shared in our webinars on intraday trading FX, which myself and my colleagues, Marcus and Jens have talked about, it's important to be thoroughly prepared for this endeavor, okay? Whatever, whatever you actually instrument you like to trade on an intraday basis, it's important to put the preparation in beforehand to ensure that you're in the best place possible to, to give a good account of yourself. So today we're gonna to pro provide a follow on from those last two sessions on US and European indices and just provide a very simple introduction to trading in Asian indices on an intraday basis so that you are prepared for what awaits. It would be uh, actually quite useful to, to know those of you who are joining today, where you're actually joining us from the uh, around the world, whether you are normally trade during the European session or normally you trade during the Asian session, or if you normally trade through the, uh, the US session, just helps me try to understand where you are in relation to the Asian index. So if you could pop that in the chat box, that would be uh, most helpful. We'd really, uh, really appreciate that. So, you know, uh, as I've talked about in the uh, other previous sessions on intraday trading indices, 
Uh, what I've learned over the years is that from personal experience, I found that there are times throughout the year when you can focus on one asset class over the others when uh, when markets are acting in a uh, in a normal and rational manner. So, you know, I appreciate we have traders here who are focused across all manner of uh, assets and instruments classes. So FX, equities, indices, fixed income, commodities and crypto. Uh, sometimes it'll be clear which uh, instrument class you should be focusing on. Other times, it, other times it's not. Okay, uh, but with that in mind, let's have a look at the options we have with regards to Asian indices. As I said, sometimes the year, you know, I find that I focus an awful lot on uh, FX trading because the, you know, for my swing trading, there are you know good trends in place. Okay, and I'm looking to sort of trade that. Other times we find that you know the indices are uh, away on a run, uh, and actually I want to be part of that. So sometimes it's very very clear, you know, which asset class is actually doing the uh, sort of sort of uh, almost like uh, setting the pace, setting the tone. Sometimes it's it's not. But if you have the ability to just to understand and work out what you're looking for across all of that breadth of uh, asset classes, well then it gives you the uh, flexibility to to basically be able to sort of trade whatever you see in front of you, and that's that's the kind of theme that we've been talking about throughout the trading spotlight series certainly myself in terms of you being a versatile trader having the ability to sort of trade any instrument on any time frame um, in any direction and as you do that you will tend to focus on you know particular asset classes and time frames that actually suit your personality but if you have the skills to, to be able to be a versatile trader that goes a long way to helping you in your trading career And uh, Apova says there's very strong correlations amongst the uh, dollar yen and the Nikkei and ASX. You're absolutely right, Apova. You are uh, you are leading me on very nicely here to a few of my slides down the line. So that's uh, that's excellent for to know, and we'll be able to touch upon that in uh, a few slides uh, time. So you know, but what is important is, as we said right from the start, and as I've said in the other intraday trading sessions, is that. You know, it's uh, important to have the right pre-market routine. You know, as you can see there, price action trading plans should be simple and it should be clear, especially when intraday trading indices. So, you know, we've talked about this myself and my uh, my colleagues, uh, Marcus and Jens, is that, you know, it's important for you to have a routine, okay, when you open a chart, okay, to look at any instrument class, you need to be looking at them and quickly identifying significant levels on the monthly, the weekly and the daily charts. Now, some people who are very new say, well, well, why am I interested in that, Paul? You know, we're, we're, you know, we're intraday traders. What's the point? Well, you know, it's important that those particular levels, OK, you know, they're, they're, you know, they hold weight within the market. And what we don't want to do is we don't want to make just silly page one kind of mistakes where effectively we're selling into selling into support or buying into resistance. OK, at this particular stage of your trading career. So being able to identify those levels gives us a good indication of you know where uh, where we want to sort of uh, how we want to sort of choose our uh, choose our time and place for trades we're looking for a price action trigger at important uh, levels when entering a trade be sure to wait for a break of the candle and what i mean from that is um, people whether trading uh, intraday at a sort of first time in their trading career they can get a little bit excited things are happening very fast certainly are at the moment and uh, when that does happen okay very often what we see is traders might wait and you know, they might not be able to wait until the till the candle completes it gives them the price action trigger and they're just ready to sort of take the shot as as quickly as they can and uh, what we just say is just you know when entering a trade be sure to wait for a break of the candle and i'll show you what that means in a few slides time ensure that you always have a stop loss okay in your trades it should be on the other side of the candle There's some fantastic uh, some fantastic webinars in the Trading Spotlight uh, archive talking about risk management. Uh, I say that no more than uh, risking 1% per, uh, per trade. And in particular, in these particular times, we might even be saying smaller than that. What we're always looking for is preferably a asymmetric reward to risk ratio. So ideally, we talk about something like, about, you know, two and a half, 2.2 to one reward to risk or at the next significant level. And we should, as part of that routine, be able to record our trades, review our trades. And so we can repeat those trades. It becomes about being able to sort of just consistently uh, act within those markets on an intraday basis. That's what we're particularly uh, looking to focus on. 
Uh, and as always, you know, when we're uh, talking about it is that before engaging in today trading, you know, let's just set some very simple rules and expectations for us as a trader. Risk management is absolutely key on risk, especially at the uh, present climate, ladies and gentlemen. OK, there is uh, there is no point in trying to shortcut your risk management, OK, because you'll be cut short if you do. Risk management, absolutely key on it in every uh, every engagement that you have with financial markets. Know what news is coming out for that session. So what we have at the moment is it's important to understand the uh, let's call it like the formal economic news, which you can find on an economic calendar. The, you'll find one there on the Admiral Markets website, but equally in rather, uh, let's say, volatile times at the moment where news actually, you know, can come out at any particular time, it's important to just keep an eye on it, okay? Just keep an eye on it, either using a, a news feed, a squawk feed, you can use Twitter, you can use, you know, there's a whole range of tools out there. It's important to sort of just keep your finger on the pulse uh, when you're uh, intraday trading during uh, volatile times. Make sure you conduct your analysis before you're trading, okay? And what, what do I mean by that is that it's, you know, it, it's a it kind of easy and simpler for you to sit down and do your analysis almost like away from when you're actually sort of uh, actively trading because your analysis is probably likely to be a bit more objective, okay? It's a bit more patient rather than trying to sort of do analysis on the hoof as a fast-moving market as uh, tends to sort of uh, take people along with it. Resist the temptation to trade out of session. I'll, I'll focus on that in a few uh, in a few slides time. Yeah, I'm sure you have a good internet connection. I know that might sound uh, might sound kind of simplistic. It might sound actually well, people would take it for granted. But you'd be uh, you'd be uh, surprised how often your internet connection can uh, drop and just at the most inopportune moment. Okay, that's that's Murphy's law. And uh, ensure you're rested and prepared for the session. All right. So if you've uh, you've had a terrible night's uh, sleep, okay, and you know you're trying to sort of uh, trade, uh, particularly any intraday session, well then just uh, just take a moment to look out for yourself. Okay. It's um, it's important that you're in a good space before you sit down to start pulling the trigger on your trades. So so yeah, you know those are uh, some kind of rules and expectations. You know for intraday trading Asian indices, but you know, I would suggest that's for any kind of intraday trading asset class, okay? It's just about being prepared. That's what we talked about right at the, uh, at the start. So, you know, what we find is that, you know, from personal experience and from talking with thousands of traders over the years is the vast majority of index traders, they usually, they usually focus on trading two specific sessions. So very often you will find they will trade European indices in the morning if you're trading through EU timings. So, and that really uh, means that, you know, people are focusing on the, on the DAX uh, and uh, they'll trade US indices in the afternoon. And you can see previous webinars that we've done on trading European indices and uh, US indices. So you will find actually, you'll find that lots of traders you know, that I know that I work with, you know, they will trade the DAX in the morning and they're trading either the Dow or the S&P, perhaps the NASDAQ in the uh, in the afternoon. However, you know, we recognize here at Admiral Markets, we've, you know, we've got a global audience. We've got people from the, across the full range, the full spectrum across all the continents. Uh, and we want to be able to sort of share all opportunities. We'll be able to sort of uh, give uh, people the opportunity to sort of trade, you know, uh, effectively what is in many ways a 24-5, 24-6 kind of uh, uh, market in terms of being able to understand how to engage with uh, with indices. So that's why today we're going to have a, a look at the Asian indices. So if we look specifically at the uh, Asian indices themselves, well, we'll find that, you know, through the Admiral Markets, either MT4 or MT5 uh, platform, that, you know, we, you do have access to a, uh, a, a few different Asian indices at the moment. In particular, you have the access to the ASX 200, which is the Australian stock index, the HSI 50, Hang Seng, the Hong Kong index, uh, and also the, uh, the, the JP225, which is the, the Nikkei, okay, the main Japanese index, okay. So those, are the, let's say, the kind of major ones that you'd have access to to trade through the uh, Admiral Markets platform, uh, and you can see that you know I have uh, I have my uh, um, screen set up there, okay, for trading Asian indices, which we'll have a little look at at the end. Um, you know, with uh, your ASX, the the Nikkei, okay, the Hang Seng, uh, and also one of the uh, one of the sort of uh, either dollar yen pairs or Aussie yen pairs, depending upon what I'm particularly looking at. And, 
we'll explain that we'll explain that in a few slides so you'll find the the asx uh, hang sang and nikkei they are in the market watch okay if you've never looked at them uh, there before you'll find quite a lot of them there in a sort of you know the kind of pink pink background okay that where uh, an awful lot of the, the major indices are available to you so you should be able to find that uh, in there for yourself but i'll i'll show you very quickly at the end with the uh, with time allowing so, you know, we're talking about if we're going to trade Asian indices, you know, what, what can be our edge? What can make us different from uh, every other trader out there? And in particular, we talked in the sort of US session, the Asian session, we talked about how, you know, we can try and use algos to uh, to our benefit. And uh, that, that still stands for Asian indices. Uh, although what we tend to find is that the, the correlations are, are not as strong as they uh, are for the US indices, but they are still they are still valid. We're also very interested in what the risk sentiment is, okay? And, uh, you know, we are uh, presently in a time where risk sentiment is most definitely off. And, uh, you know, that shows itself on the markets and we will, uh, we will look at that, okay? We'll have a look at that in a couple of uh, slides time. So, you know, uh, risk sentiment is, uh, it is important when we trade Asian indices. And uh, what we have to remember is that the Japanese yen is one of the world's main safe havens, okay? And uh, if, you, uh, if you weren't aware of that, if you're a completely new trader, you'd only have to look at the majority of the JPY pairs to, to recognize that, you know, there has been a, a flood into both Japanese yen and also Swiss franc as uh, two of the world's main safe havens as we go through this period of extended uh, volatility but what it does is that has an impact on the nikkei as well as the jpy so the question to you is you know when risk sentiment is off how do you believe those markets will react maybe you've got some experience of trading it maybe you've just thinking you know just well, how do they uh, what's the correlation between them how does it actually uh, how does it actually unfold and the question is you know when the risk sentiment is on how do you think that will show up in the chart so just take a, a moment of it maybe you understand maybe you've got a thought maybe you've got a question about that by all means pop that in our uh, pop that in the uh, the chat box or we'll, uh, we'll be very happy to uh, as i said we're always happy to sort of uh, take the questions and uh, have a have a, a, a sort of a, a chat about you know how that can how that can work for you but if you just think about you know what we've talked about there is you know jpy is one of the main safe havens in the world and it has it's very strongly related with the, the Japanese index, the Nikkei. So if you have to remember is that the, the Nikkei is a reflection of the Japanese economy. The Japanese economy is a very export heavy economy. Okay, they look to make things and export it to the world. I think that they might be sort of number two or number three exporter in the, uh, the, the world. So of course, any impact upon the Japanese yen has an impact on those companies that are looking to export their goods globally. So if we have, like we see at the moment, we have a risk off sentiment, which means that money piles into the Japanese, the Japanese yen strengthens. Well, the more the Japanese yen strengthens, the more those uh, products and services and exports from Japanese companies, you know, they seem less attractive. So, of course, that has a knock on impact onto the Nikkei. So we very often see nice correlation between, you know, if the yen strengthens, the Nikkei weakens and, and vice versa. When the yen actually weakens, that can that give the, uh, the Nikkei a boost as well. So it's important to take that into consideration. You just have to. Um, give that some thought to understand, you know, what is the present, uh, um, what's the present risk sentiment and you can, you know, you can determine that by looking at these particular charts. Um, at the moment, ladies and gentlemen, it's actually very, very clear, as you will see in a year, uh, in a few slides time. But, you know, it's about being able to recognize how can you do this on a, on, you know, on, on the basis for the next few weeks, days, months quarters years of your trading career rather than the sort of kind of the, the times that we find ourselves in at this moment <clears throat> one of the other additional elements we need to consider when trading asian indices is are you trading during the asian session or are you trading outside the asian session 
appreciate that that will depend upon your geographical location and I'm going to try and quickly explain both situations and as I said it'd be helpful if you know if you can just for those of you here today if you can just ping your do you normally trade during the Asian session or do you normally trade outside of the Asian session on the uh, whether the e, uh, European or uh, US session if you can let us know we'd uh, really appreciate that helps that helps enormously okay just to understand who's uh, who we have here in the room with us um, who we have here with the room with us today <clears throat> so you know we talked about um, we talked about how you know that uh, when it comes to trading Asian indices yes they do have correlations okay yes there are uh, elements of uh, being able to watch how the algos work and use that to our uh, benefit. Uh, and also it's a case of we want to understand what the risk sentiment is in play. But what it also means is that, you know, we can also look to use some of our existing tool set that we have covered in previous webinars. And please, by all means, go and uh, take a look at them. There's a, a, a wide and uh, fascinating collection of uh, webinars that myself and Jens and Marcus have uh, collated for you all, which is, uh, covers all manner of aspects of, uh, of trading. But we've talked about, you know, taking an interest when we're intraday trading and taking an interest in elements, things like previous highs and lows, th looking at things like double tops and uh, bottoms and looking for simple price action setups and uh, particular price action combinations. So there are all those webinars out there. They're on the archive. If you want to have a little bit more insight, then please, please go and uh, take a look at them. You'll find them on the uh, on Traders Yard. You'll find them on our Facebook page. You'll find them on the uh, Admiral Markets YouTube channel as well. So that, you know, the idea being that we can keep it as simple as possible again, whenever we're, whenever we're in today trading an index, whether it be Asian, Europe, European or US, we're looking for a consistent sort of uh, pattern, we're looking for consistent messages. So uh, Charlie said there that he normally trades during the European session. Thanks for that, uh, Charlie. You appreciate that. It helps, okay? Helps us understand, <coughs> excuse me, you know, where people are doing and how they're looking at the Asian session and how they can use it to their own particular uh, benefit. So here is a uh, um, here's a, some kind of a, a couple of the, the charts on the uh, uh, on the Asian index. And as I said, what I have here is a I have set up here. <coughs> excuse me, as we'll show you on the charts in a moment. Up on the top left here, I have the ASX 200, the Australian index. They have the, the Nikkei at the top right, the Hang Seng at the bottom left, and the uh, the kind of the, the dollar yen there in the bottom uh, in the bottom right. Uh, and you know, as we said, you know, we can see you know that there are elements of correlation. So, you know, we can see that you know as the uh, as the the dollar yen as the dollar yen here is starting to sort of uh, be in a downtrend. Let's use the drawing tool here. I appreciate that. I always makes things just a little bit just things a little bit as you know as we've seen the sort of dollar yen start to uh, roll over and point down remember that is indicating that the the dollar is weakening the japanese yen is strengthening okay if the japanese yen is uh, strengthening that's an indication okay that you know the sort of risk off sentiment is uh, occurring and uh, when i uh, did this uh, chart uh, on the 24th of february and um, we were just starting to see a little bit of uh, strength in the japanese yen but invariably as we saw you know strengthen the japanese yen well not surprisingly, okay, we were seeing the Nikkei starting to uh, roll over along with the ASX, uh, along with the, the Hang Seng, okay. <coughs> Excuse me, I do apologize. That's, uh, that's not coronavirus, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, it's just a cough. So, <clears throat> but, you know, what we're seeing, there's an element of that correlation coming into play, and that's what we're particularly interested in. That's what we're looking at. So, trying to understand whether the risk on risk off sentiment and how that is playing out in the Japanese yen and how that's playing out in these particular Asian indices and hopefully you can um, hopefully you can see that and just you know leading on in that particular case then uh, you know as I said these these charts are the same and I'll just point out once again with the tool uh, I have a user tool okay a very simple meta trader tool called the iSessions which is you'll find uh, uh, available uh, and I just use that in to sort of draw in the uh, the kind of box of what is the Asian range okay for me I normally sort of put that from around about sort of midnight UK time through till 7 a.m. 
uh, that'll be 7 a.m. UK time, okay? So just gives me that sort of seven hour, seven, eight hour window, okay? Just to, uh, to have a look at what the Asian uh, session is like. But the interesting thing here in this particular uh, picture is, you know, what we're interested in is even though we're looking at Asian session here, or even though we're looking at Asian indices, hopefully you can see on the short time frame charts, okay, here and here and here, is that actually, what we saw is that, you know, in this particular, the, the selling picked up in the European session. So, you know, what I want you to take away from that is, even if you're trading it during the Asian, Asian indices during the Asian session, is that you can also still trade Asian indices during the European session, perhaps even during the US session, because you can see that actually what will happen is that, you know, if there is a strong move occurring, then actually that just accelerates during the beginning of the European session. So if you're able to identify good setups, good patterns, good triggers, that allows you to, to work in line with that. Uh, and, and as I said, you know, there I just uh, use the uh, iSessions uh, uh, tool there, okay, which you can find pretty much for any MT4 uh, platform uh, and be able to put that in there so you can hopefully see that it just helps me define, okay, helps me define where that particular Asian, uh, the Asian session is for myself so I can look at, you know, how did price perform during the session? Was it already trending during the Asian session? So it just allows me to sort of identify, is there a particular trend in place? And in which case, are there the opportunities to ride with it? Or uh, is the market actually congested, which we'll, which we'll look, at in a, uh, look at in a moment here. So as I said, this is how I just use the uh, thing. So we can actually see this is uh, the Nikkei, okay? It's a 15 minute chart. But actually, hopefully you can just see, even by using the tool, you know, that's actually just showing me there on a session by session basis that actually that, that Nikkei was on an intraday downtrend. Okay, you can see that just the boxes were just just effectively getting lower, 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 uh, lower highs, lower low throughout that week. Okay, so it's just giving me a little hint of where I feel that, uh, you know, where I feel that, you know, is there a trend in place? Okay, and the, the moving averages are just confirming it and the price action itself is actually confirming it. So, you know, you're getting a good feel for the fact that we are in, in this particular case into a start of a good downtrend and that will allow us to, that will allow us to move correctly. And equally in this particular case, you know, this is the, once again, it's the Nikkei on the 15 minute chart, but hopefully you can see that, okay, as you know, we set up the Asian square box, we can see that it's each one, you know, all week is just getting higher and higher. That's just giving us indication that, you know, this, this is in an upwards trend at this particular week. And so, you know, when it's nice and clear like that, I don't want to fight it. I want an actually an opportunity to sort of get on board and ride that particular trend. That's what, that's what we're actually looking for in terms of when there is a clear trend. Very often on an intraday basis, there isn't. On a, on a, very often on an intraday basis, it's actually, you know, it's quite congested or the moves are very, very constrained. And in which case will then, you know, mean reversion opportunities are abound. But on the rare times when we do get very, very clear trends like that, well, actually, you know, it's in our interest to try and, uh, to try and work with it rather than fight it. And, uh, you know, as we go on, just uh, have a look at, you know, what I want you to sort of identify and have a, have a look at, as I said, this is, this is the ASX, this is the 15 minute chart here, you can see it there. But what we, as I said, talk about, you know, using the, the box to identify if there's a trend, but also then we just almost like look inside the box, okay? And just want you to look at, you know, how does price react inside this particular box, okay? And what we can see here in this particular case, actually, you know, the, on the ASX, there was, a, there was a gap down, okay, as to the, uh, as to the market opening. Uh, but actually then we can see that, you know, price just effectively just really didn't do a great deal, okay? You know, it's uh, in, uh, very often in the case in the, here we go, you know, in, uh, in the uh, kind of, the, the sort of Asian session, you know, in uh, let's say more rational, less volatile times, it's not unusual just to see, you know, particular uh, instruments during the Asian session, just effectively just going back and forth in a kind of a, in a 
sort of almost kind of tight congestion period there okay markets are using it as an opportunity to understand what happened the previous day and then perhaps you know accumulate accumulate contracts to to look at where we're at, where we're looking to move forward go from going into the european and american session so it is just you know don't be afraid to have a look at what's happening within that your uh, asian session and uh, you know as i said if you yourself are based in uh, the asian trading session or you particularly like to trade the asian session well for the most part it's not unusual as i said to see what that you know trading like that during that asian session so you know there you'd be looking for you know just be looking for you know ability to sort of trade a small range okay which is identifying you know, the present uh, previous kind of highs and lows within that range and seeing how the market reacts when it gets back up there and being able to trade back into the range almost like back from one side of the box to the uh, to the other as the as the market kind of congests and accumulates during that particular period But what we're also interested in is, you know, if you, you know, we're looking at to start with inside the box, we're also curious to see well, what happens outside the box, okay? And what we've drawn on here, okay, is you know just looking at how uh, price reacts to that particular Asian range. Let me just draw it on here. So you know we can see that we had that box where price was just effectively going back and forth during it. But then what's interesting to us is, you know, we can see our highs there, we can see what our lows there. But what I want you to sort of start to take an idea on is, well, actually, what's happening here? Okay, what's happening here? What's happening here? Okay, just, uh, you know, that kind of the, the levels of that Asian range or the edges probably is a better way to describe it. I do apologize. The edges is kind of looking at, well, what's actually going on there at the edges? I hope that you can actually see that is that uh, very, uh, very often what we see is, you know, price sort of having quite a lot of false breakouts to begin with. Not always. It depends upon the, uh, the overall market environment context, but hopefully you can see that very often, you know, where, uh, where, <clears throat> where the market sets its levels or its edges in, the, in that uh, during that Asian session can be, can be very useful information for us going forward if you're trading into the European session. <clears throat> and you know, what we can see is that there's just uh, more examples of the same here in that price having just uh, been in its range for during the Asian session, you can see that every time it tried to break out, okay, it effectively reversed at that before moving moving to the other side of the uh, other side of the box during that day. So, you know, we start to, to look at, well, you know, when price, when we uh, identify the edges of the, the box during the Asian session, looking at, well, you know, do we see false breakouts in and around that particular, those levels of the Asian session? Because for when markets are, mostly range bound that provides us with as i said interesting opportunities looking for price action combinations looking for a kind of one two three sort of double bottom double top formations that gives us very simple price action triggers that we can utilize to, to trade with what the, the market is showing us at that particular time So, you know, here's a couple of final points for you to, to take away is that, you know, depending upon whether you're trading on MT4, or MT5 platform, go away and build yourself a profile for the Asian indices, which I'll show you mine in a, in a moment. And just have a look at how the markets are reacting on an intraday basis. You'll probably see quite interesting uh, price uh, movements on the uh, uh, on today's uh, or the last couple of weeks price um, but it's a question of looking at you know are, are those indexes and the yen are they moving in unison that's that's a good point or are they moving separately are they quite disconnected understand very quickly is there a risk on or a risk off sentiment because that can start to drive your uh, decision making and look at you know how does price react at previous highs and lows of the asian session did it create an opportunity for you just to use very simple price action? So that's here, as always, I'd like to set a little bit of homework for you to take away, something to work on. It's uh, useful for you because the more you do this deliberate practice, the better you'll become as a trader. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, as well as US and European indices, we now know that Asian indices are also an exciting asset class, okay, a series of instruments to trade. However, as always, it's important to be thoroughly prepared and be aware of upcoming news items. Question is, is there a strong correlation? If there isn't, or if it's all disconnected, it might be a signal for you to avoid them. Is one index in charge, okay? Is one index leading the, uh, leading the, sort of, uh, leading the pack? Well, it might be interesting to follow that for that particular session. 
Most importantly, are you aware of the risk sentiment in those markets? That can have a huge impact on the way the market reacts in this session. Are there any particular static or dynamic levels of support in play? Be aware of them because they may be useful. And not unsurprisingly, manage risk always, ladies and gentlemen. That is the key element. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll just take, you know, for the last few minutes, we'll take a little look at the, uh, the live markets. I appreciate we are in somewhat unprecedented times, rather, rather volatile, and it'll be interesting to see how, uh, how markets have reacted to that. But as always, if you want more support, you can join us after the webinar, okay, in the Traders Yard community. Myself and my colleagues, Marcus and Jens, they in particular, they put in some excellent, uh, excellent posts there every day about their trading. So please feel free to come and join us. You can see us there, join the uh, trading spotlight group, tradersyard.com forward slash group forward slash three one two. And uh, don't forget to join us next time in the webinar, okay? You'll see my colleague Marcus on Wednesday. He's going to be talking about a beginner's guide to the MetaTrader, how to navigate the MetaTrader platform, how to customize your charts, different order types, how to open and close trades and more. So he'll be doing that at 2 p.m. London time on Wednesday, the 18th of March. So check your inbox for the, uh, the webinar. As always, you'll find lots of analysis and education on the admiralmarkets.com website. And you can always contact us on email, hello at admiralmarkets.com. Look at us uh, on the youtube.com forward slash admiralmarkets, our facebook.com forward slash admiralmarkets global group, where you'll actually see the previous trading spotlight webinars. And please join us and uh, make yourself uh, aware of them. So I hope you found that useful. We've just got a couple of minutes, so I'm just going to uh, bear with me. I will switch across to the uh, Admiral Markets MetaTrader 4 platform just to quickly show you how my uh, profile is set up so you can see and also have a little look at what uh, Asian indexes have been doing over the, uh, the last week or two as they've been uh, rather, uh, <coughs> rather uh, tasty in many ways. So if you just bear with me one moment, we'll just switch across. So hopefully you can still uh, hopefully you can still see my uh, screen. Hopefully you can still see the uh, hear me. Okay. Hopefully you can see the uh, MT4 platform here. Okay. So it's a uh, here we go. So I have a profile set up here just as Asian indices on an intraday basis. There. Okay. You can see as I said in the uh, in the chart package. We know what we had was a uh, I have a setup here. Let's just put these into across the daily and i have charts here that are let's just make that as you can see up here on the top left i've got the asx 200 on the daily i've got the uh, the nikkei okay here on the daily chart hang Seng on the daily chart and the uh, the dollar yen on the uh, daily chart so um, you know what we can see over the uh, what we've seen over the last uh, couple of weeks. I appreciate we've had a little bit unprecedented times. Is that uh, you know you can see for yourself that uh, you know have the dollar yen push up a little bit since really the middle of uh, uh, February for the last month or so. It was for the most part one way traffic. We've seen a, a quite a significant bounce there. Okay, in terms of the uh, in terms of the dollar against the Japanese yen, but that kind of leads on to, to understanding the uh, the role of uh, U.S. dollars in the uh, in the markets at the moment but certainly we've had Japanese yen strengthening there and, and as I said I have the uh, here we go Aussie yen as well here just to give us an indication okay the uh, Australian dollar is very often uh, used as a proxy for, uh, for China and of course with what we've had going on with both global markets and coronavirus well you can see that that effectively has just been going one direction in fact you know since the sort of start of the year that's an indication okay that you know sort of effectively risk off sentiment is running that means you know money's flowing into the Japanese yen flowing out of the Australian dollar that's just helpful Opening, as I said, we want to quickly build that picture. Are we in a risk on or risk off environment? We've definitely, most definitely been in a risk off environment for the last few weeks. If we just look at the uh, ASX there, you can see what's, uh, what's actually happened there. You know, as I said, very often the, uh, the uh, very often those markets are kind of uh, congested and range bound. Uh, that's clearly not the case for the, uh, for the last month. You can see that there for yourself. You don't have to have uh, traded for two decades to understand what, uh, what's been uh, going on there. But, you know, it's a case of looking at, well, 
once again, is there a case of, you know, what can we do in terms of our, uh, in terms of our trading? You know, if we look at the, the Nikkei itself, you know, just going down to the four hour chart, just even now on the four hour chart, okay, as I said, you know, when there is a, a very clear trend in place, which there has been, well then, you know, it's an opportunity for you to trade just very simple price action combinations there, okay. And uh, for those of you who've joined me for previous sessions, we've talked about we've talked about things like rejection candles, okay. We've talked about things like three bar reversals. We've talked about price action setups and price action combinations. And uh, there's been a few just there, just on the, the four hour chart. But you know, if we go down to the here we go, if we go down to the kind of 15 minute chart. Well, it's a case of I'll just put all of them across onto the 15 minute chart here. We'll start to get a bit of a picture of what has, uh, what's been occurring, what we're looking for. So Hang Seng, here we go. There you go, that's about right. So, you know, we can see that because, you know, it's been quite a while and, you know, the ASX probably gives us a good indication there is that, you know, we've had, you know, we've been in a downtrend there. As I said, you can recognize that from the, uh, recognize that from, you know, from the, on the daily chart but also just looking as we said the box is going down but even within that we can see here okay from uh, like friday session there you know we just literally had a huge double bottom followed by a massive massive sort of move stronger there okay in uh, in the asian session which is you know as i said it's a case of you know just it's a case of the sort of a sense of the times that we are trading in but even then you know the, the sort of longer term downtrend really exerted when price had pushed back up to these highs it then fell away and what we saw last night after we saw the actions of the us federal reserve and also following through from bank of japan and other major central banks is that the you know the, those kind of indexes have continued to fall away they they gap down this is a gap on the sunday night just to show that zoom in from Friday to Sunday, we gapped down, price rallied up a little bit, but then you can see the price, the sort of downtrend re-exerted itself. And during these European session, it has just continued to, okay? And, you know, we've had, we had a pull back in, okay? A little three bar reversal there down. And, and now we're sitting here as we go into the US session with key reversals, double bottom there, okay? And uh, what will undoubtedly, we'll be waiting to see what actually occurs in the uh, in the American session based upon what the, uh, based upon what the, uh, uh, but the Americans did uh, last night. But if you look at Hang Seng, okay, there's correlation as in we had big moves, okay, on the, the Friday Asian session, but the you know the 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 existing longer term downtrend re-exerted itself. Here is a three bar reversal here off the 200 period moving average before price dropped down just during the overnight session last night. So kind of Sunday into Monday for here for Europeans. That's the Asian session price fell down again pulled up okay had a rejection candle before it's dropped down again further okay so it's a it's a you know we are trading in rather uh, eventful times ladies and gentlemen and uh, myself and my colleagues you know we're going to be doing a series of uh, updated trading spotlight webinars on trading through the crisis and how to how to sort of uh, position yourself so please make sure you sign up for them and uh, join you join us for those particular sessions. So uh, I hope that's given you a little bit of uh, insight into how you could uh, engage with uh, Asian indices on an intraday basis. As I said, we are going through rather eventful times at the moment. So just ensure that your risk management is first and foremost in your uh, behaviors of the way you uh, actually trade. Set yourself up a profile like we have here, okay, so that you can have a look, just see about when your markets are correlated. Are oh, does, does that provide you with particular opportunities that you could take advantage of? Of, based on some of the just simple price action setups and combinations that we've shared during the previous trading spotlight webinar series so uh, I, I wish you the very best of success in your own trading i appreciate this is rather uh, as i said rather eventful time so just just make sure you manage risk okay just make sure you're uh, you're patient and you take your time okay and uh, as always, I wish you the best of success in your own trading. And I look forward to speaking to you at uh, one of our future uh, trading spotlight sessions, ladies and gentlemen. Trade well.